Hello and welcome to episode 48 of the Yarn Chicks podcast. My name is Mimi, I podcast from Berlin and I have a family and I work as a yarn ship. Yarn ship? <laughs> I work as a yarn shop assistant uh, in two uh, shops across Berlin and I knit, crochet, um, toy make and I mend. In my podcast I usually have a little tarot knit oracle at the very end and a knit reportage which is basically just a way of documenting different things in my life. It kind of started with photo shoots and stuff like that and now I'm filming just um, special clips. This week I'm gonna share a time lapse of some balcony gardening because I thought that would be fun and share some of the plants that I have on my balcony which is like a tiny space but I am very much enjoying that it's green and blooming and that I have insects visiting me there and it's a great place to sit in it on the balcony in the evenings and on the weekend so I thought it's worth a knit reportage <laughs> Uh, yeah, so welcome to this corner of YouTube where we also have lots of community activity. You will see um, a lot of knit along or craft along connected uh, crafting in this episode. I think it's almost like the sole focus of this one, so I hope you don't mind. Um, it makes lot of sense to me because I really enjoy crafting in this kind of togetherness or close communication with a group of people and I welcome everyone in. I welcome you here now and I hope you have a drink and you're crafting whatever you do when you podca podcast view. Maybe you, I don't know, maybe you're doing some chores or maybe I'm just back background um, vibes to you and I'm happy about that. Thank you for joining me. I have my kombucha and I'm so happy my brewing is really on point at the moment. I use black tea and a scoby and then I have second fermentations. This time it's a mint fermentation and I've just added strawberries from the garden and some ice with my favourite straw, which was actually a gift from our Stash Vent 2020. So um, the podcast crew or, you know, through the podcast, we, I basically organised a little advent calendar swap all from Stash. And yes, uh, it will happen again in 2021. But in my um, joyous uh, advent calendar, or actually in an advent calendar, a friend sent alongside that, Wiebeke, who is Knit Pearl, she sent me this um, straw and I've been crafting a lot from those um, stash shares and um, her crafting presents. So in the Adventism specials, like my, my kind of vlogmas, you'll see a lot of this. So I just wanted to say I use it a lot and I have this really cool jar from my favourite bubble tea place, New Work. They sell these kind of glass jars and I thought it would be really great to have like uh, bubble tea in glass rather than plastic. And I, yeah, I now use it for drinking my kombucha. And I've brought lots of projects, you might see like a glimpse of them in the background. Uh, ready to share them with you here.
been a little visual introduction of what to expect. I often film these at the end just to give a kind of insight to what's happening this time. So for my current knit alongs I have been very busy actually for the Lino Mocha knit along. I'm knitting and I'm dreaming up all the makes with Lino Mocha this year and um, the Magic 3 Ma has gone a bit on the back burner but I for me in my crafting I hope you're still busy I'm still like always following the hashtags and excited to see what you're making and how you're sharing about your crafts it makes me so happy there'll be um overall price in the end and I'm definitely gonna start crafting for the mending price very soon because I'm going on holiday so I'm gonna enjoy lots of time off and lots of crafting I have, however, not knitted for Magic 3 Mile, but unknitted. So, in a bit of a desperate way, I had mixed up um, my dye lots. I have two skeins of one dye lot of this black wool cut yarns, which is uh, an alpaca blend. And I've just tinked it and um, yeah two skeins of one dye lot and one skein of another dye lot and two years ago I knitted almost an entire sweater from the one skein thinking I was using one of the two dye lot pair however I hadn't and then I would have had these massive um, lines because the dye lot difference is actually quite big so I frogged it I unraveled this whole kid's sweater and it was actually quite painful but but fulfilling at the same time I don't know it's it was a bit of a seesaw moment in, emotionally because I'd spend a lot of time knitting that especially during the first um, part of the Brexit ordeal um, especially because connected to my family I don't know if you notice I am German speaking English a lot in my family that's to do with the fact that we're a bilingual family living here in Berlin and um, the whole um, being European without it being European reality for our family has been actually a tough nut and I knitted the sweater and I was always talking about tinking and undoing the wrong of this stupid situation and um, yeah, I ended up having to tink the whole thing so I've unraveled I'm ready to go again and I will I will knit this in a much larger size um, also because the child that I originally planned and made the sweater for has grown <laughs> surprise so she wouldn't fit into that first sweater uh, anymore anyway so we'll just start again so it's a, a little rewind moment on this project um i will keep you posted because i'm also mending the apron dress or pinafore dress that was part of the set and i've committed to some woodwork um which is just like final stages of a project that also started two years ago so I'll keep you posted. That's basically the second set I'm working on because the baby set is kind of far along. I'm very excited about that and I will I will show all of this in the July podcast. I currently just don't feel like a lot of wool action. I feel like linen action. So I wanted to share this about it and I wanted to share that I'm super excited that lots of friends are reaching out and saying they're gonna donate um, goodies to the prizes and I guess in July I will also be able to show some of these makes because of you know them arriving here and I hope you're all excited to craft for little people in your life or the life of dear friends or um, family babies or family children or relatives well, well that's the same thing I mean neighbors or maybe you're donating some of your crafts and I think that's brilliant um, to not just think 
um, about those we know, but children around the world who uh, will appreciate a handmade um, garment or a toy. We were making three items <laughs> in sets of three where it's a top, bottoms and a toy. I Even if I'm repeating myself, I keep saying this because maybe someone new is watching this podcast and excited to potentially craft along. We're a really open um, group and very welcoming and you can decide or define what is a top, a bottom and a toy in your set quite openly. I really highly recommend checking out this hashtag and we also have like annual add-ons so if if you want to see what people made last year you just say magic three mile 2020 and um, yeah we're in magic three mile 2021 and I'm super excited you're here for it with me. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small we can sit together it's so beautiful, you and me We meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free Let's go into Lino Mucca. I'm actually wearing the 2019 um, feature design and uh, version of the currently. This is the Mount Pleasant Tea by Pippin Pin and that's Megan Nodegger and her sister. I really love this design. I think it's blurring out a bit. I don't know if it's just the little camera screen that I'm seeing that it's kind of playing tricks on the eyes and I really hope when I edit this is not happening because it's kind of like moving. Um, I think it's just a crappy little screen. It's a uh, top with a little lace hem that you knit um, bottom up. And then once you come to the armpits, you knit the front and back separate, going backwards and forwards. And you have these little sleeves, but that's solely because it's quite a wide design. And then you add a little ribbing here and on the neckline. Brilliant pattern. Uh, size inclusive from the get-go. So uh, Megan is not one of those designers who has to go, Oh, hang on there's other bodies in this world and then has to amend her mess up she's actually someone who from the get-go designed for all bodies and um, this top is actually one of those designs in my mind that uh, actually works for all bodies it's a shape that's very flattering I feel <laughs> and all the makes in in the, that year or previous years. Um, with this design in our knit along, oh, when I see it on a friend I'm like wow you know it's good and beautiful on all of you and I'm super happy that it has been crafted. I'm actually considering whether I should make another one but that's just my mind. I'm moving from uh, a lost knitting mojo to kind of like an 
overdrive, like over mind buzz when it comes to knitting and actually the reality is that I hardly have any time for knitting in my day-to-day -day life but now I'm, I'm going into three weeks holiday so I'm going to use them to knit all the Linumuka that I want to as my holiday makes without any stress and just I'm gonna just flow with it um, which these three weeks off also entices like an off-screen time so I thought I will record and upload a podcast just before to also apologize if I miss any of your posts in the upcoming month or so so around the 20th of July you will see me reappear um, and I will maybe on the weekends spend some time looking through our make-alongs but no doom scrolling and no scrolling to the bottom of that advertising riddled Instagram <laughs> feed of mine where I'm like oh god this is just so tedious like I have to like literally it's like you have to work to see the art and craft and magic that your friends make and it's a bit tiring to do that I don't know why I spent so much time on my phone. It's the bottom line of this little, uh, I digress basically, that that was the topic of that loop in my story. Um, this is one of the makes I've made in the past. That same year I made something that I'm currently mending. So I'm gonna show that in a minute in the mending part. And last year in Magic, in Magic 3 Mile, yeah, well, I double dipped with Magic 3 Mile with this top, but 2019, first year, we had Lino Mukakala made two items, and 2020, I made three items. I'm quite excited um, that I'm obviously thinking, even in these busy days where I'm working full time now and um, I have three kids mainly in homeschool or like not homeschool, on, in online school at home, I obviously haven't crafted as much as, as I did when we were in complete lockdown last year. When this was the featured design, this is the Ranunculus sweater in t-shirt form. Uh, designed by uh, Midori Hirose, who is Knit Cafe Midori. It has a really nice lace detail which pops in this linen. And I, I just omitted the sleeves and made a little tiny little twisted rib. Oh, the camera's blowing it out. Twisted rib, a bit in, in accordance to this uh, finishing. I've gained a bit of weight, especially on the arms. Um, I don't really, well, exercise, I guess that's the problem. And um, so this is now a bit tight. So I wonder if I'm gonna, I have more of this marine blue Lino Mocha, so I might undo and redo, or I just kind of frog it and reuse the yarn and make like a shorter ribbing. I turned it back to front. So the, um, I think I knitted, the pearl stitches um, just as pearl stitches and the knit stitches as a twisted rib it, it's kind of a different look to what the original pattern, pattern called for but I thought it was really good uh, and really good effect I'm definitely gonna mend this even if I just undo the cast off edge and cast off much looser again or something I just want to have more room and feel more comfortable wearing this top because I really like wearing Lino Muka and Lino Muka held with three strands is what happens here it's it's super drapey it's flowy it's lush and silky and I um, stitched in a little <laughs> detail so that I know what's front and back because I always struggle with that kind of stuff with my handmaids and I love this design feature and I really like Midori. I know there was a bit of a discussion about Ranunculus because it's actually a one-size-fits-all. Um, Midori later on included like a size fixture but it kind of just played on the first design so I know that 
there had been a bit of a kind of like it, it was a topic in our make along last year that it wasn't a hundred percent size inclusive because it's this kind of one size fits all item but in general I appreciate when designers uh, update their patterns and add more sizes um, but obviously it's much better if they are size inclusive from the get-go and I should show you more of the makes I made last year. I used lots of Lino Mucha leftovers and colors and made my daughter a parachute. I shrank the pattern so it's child size, but it fits me as a more kind of fitted parachute, not a super oversized adult one that usually would be the kind of look I love wearing it. I kind of worn it a bit too much for her to actually still accept it as her so I need to I think I need to just make myself one and I definitely have more leftovers and Lino Mucha in my um in my stash so that I can make this again it was a way of double dipping with both my make-alongs that I really love and I highly recommend double dipping anyway any at any time mm. And then there was a love uh, affair knitting, which is the Solasta sweater. This is the front. With these amazing dramatic sleeves. Um, detailed um, paint with smaller bits of Lino Mucha. The main yarn in this sweater is the Angora 2. Uh, it's not an Angora, it's a mohair wool acrylic blend that we sell at Wollen, where I work. Lino Mucha is the in-house yarn by Wollen, so 100% Lithuanian linen yarn, because Ruta, the owner of Wollen, is from Lithuania and she basically imports and creates the colorways. And we also at Volen sell this Angora 2 um, from a company called Mida, also from Lithuania. And I really, I really enjoyed making this pattern and pairing the two yarns. That is also something in Lino Muka Knit Along that is highly uh, suggested to do because it's great to use up stash and pair yarns and in this pattern there was no other way because it is in this kind of flowy boucle alpaca I think usually um, and I just chose this yarn instead it's very similar um, in gauge and um, quality to the original yarn used in Zolasta which I think was an alpaca blend mm. I definitely love this double double hem detail uh, oh, color, oh, I don't know, a split hem at the bottom. It's very warm, I uh, won't put it on today, but it was a huge joy to craft with all the leftovers. So, you know, I really enjoyed making these three last year. And kind of set off into Lino Muka Knit Along for this year with the same goal to potentially make three things. And I'm currently knitting, again, uh, a stashed yarn held double with Lino Muka. This is the Slanting Slipover by Anna Wenzel. And I love it. I've really grown to understand the pattern at first it was a bit of a mind boggler because you start knitting with the collar and then you cast on and re-pick up the stitches in here and cast on again for the shoulder part and that was a bit confusing I like the look of this silk um, mohair merino mix um, have I got a skein? I should have because in my project bag. Uh, this is by Mohair de Canard, like a really, really deep, deep stash. And it's kind of like a marl to ply. And I'm pairing with uh, Lino Mocha here in chocolate, in the chocolate colorway. 
so this and this. <laughs> and the fabric that it creates is just absolutely divine. Obviously it's a bit warm again for these summery days. We've been having a bit of a hot hot uh, face here so I'm a bit slow knitting on it. But I think uh, soon I will be able to put it all on a needle. So and now I'm knitting the back or front. I don't know. You can decide once you wear it what's the back and the front. And I have to do about this much of this kind of knitting flat. And then I will put all the stitches on one needle and be knitting in the round, which I'm hoping to do once I'm on, on holiday to have like this as a mindless knitting in the round project that would be a great um progress to have made on this uh, rather complicated start um and then i can start with more um complicated or different um projects um to knit alongside because this is well yeah it, it's taking quite a lot of my focus but i'm super happy to knit it to knit onwards with it and i recently caked up at work the next skein and i thought i'll show you how i keep lino mukha when i've caked it because in the previous episode i was talking about how i really like winding these um tough these like really dense balls and <laughs> balls of lino mucca where I just kind of wind a really classic yarn ball which takes a lot of time with this rather thin yarn it's 245 meters on 50 grams and to kind of wind it does take some time but it makes it much less problematic when knitting because a cake potentially falls apart um, whilst you knit obviously not when it's this kind of compact freshly caked up size but later on it it, ten, it will um, tend to fall, fall apart basically and then you have kind of knotted linen issues so I have these really small um, cotton bags I have two of these not well with different prints and stuff on but um, they're both um, things that I found through flea markets or little from uh, one is like a marble bag I, I don't have it here I don't know I w recently washed it so I will find it at some point um but anyway it it they were finds from flea markets and they're really good because they're these small cotton bags and then you can take the yarn end that comes from the center which I've kind of wound out around the outside of this and use you know put your cake inside the cotton bag and and close it and now use this as a center pool um, yarn cake but the yarn cake is somewhat contained in this bag this is a really helpful way of keeping your cake safe from detangling or tangling with other stuff in your project bag if you don't have these cotton bags I know they're kind of like special finds because they're smaller than than your kind of usual sock sized uh, project bags if you don't have them you could even use like a paper bag like a sandwich bag paper sandwich bag um would also work just as well sometimes um you know you have those bags as like small plastic bags i mean if you're recycling that's a good thing as long as it's kind of small and contains the whole cake relatively well that is super it's a super way of keeping a cake in your project bags. I will report back about this specific cake in the next podcast. Um, and I wanted to end this part of the Lino Muka chat with my swatch story, because actually this project just happened to be the one I got going with because I was inspired diving into my stash after re-meeting also my friend who'd given me this um, mohair silk blend. I was kind of inspired by the colorways and this connection and uh, I just started knitting it and I only recently swatched for the featured design. <laughs>
So this year's Lino Muka Kao featured design is the Rimi Muta cardigan. I would have just shared glimpses of the design and my swatch and the colorway I chose. This is the actual real life swatch. The colorway is uh, marine blue again. <laughs> so the same as um, my uh, last year's uh, Ranunculus. However, this time I'm pairing with the second strand, which is a mohair. I'm going to come a bit closer. I swatched in the round, so you will see the yarn in the back. I do this when I um, 100% sure that I will knit a pattern in the round as well because my gauge is definitely 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 different when I knit in the round to when I knit flat because I'm not a good um, knitter of the pearl stitch I have issues hence I now pearl Portuguese um, but I realize I'm quite slow um, changing patterns because I'll knit um, the knit stitches uh, continental style and I purl the pearl stitches Portuguese style so I'm kind of interchanging things which worked great in this um, in this part here where I was knitting the Lino Muka held double flat for the rest of the Mount Pleasanty for those kind of moments it works fine but for an entire project like the Remy Muta cardigan I've decided I will knit it in the round and steek I have gauge with both needle sizes that I um, tried so this is the 2.5 and this is the 2.75 I there is a, um, a only a slight difference in the row gauge so I'm going to let the row gauge decide what needle I will knit with. I'm going to remeasure and <laughs> re-block this because it was in my bag yesterday because I wanted to take it to work to show to my friends. Um, I'm going to make the row gauge decide um, the needle size, but I knitted this on the 2.75 holding two strands of Lino Muka. So I reckon I will knit the Premia, which is a silk mohair by La Mana with the uh, Lino Mocha, like one strand each, I think I will net the two, use the 2.75. But once I've cast on, I will let you know because I think the ribbing will be a 2.5 and then the main cardigan 2.75. I guess you can hear from the needle size and the size of the project that this will be a slow grower. <laughs> I'm really not for rushing knits and I am not a fast knitter. I have no FO this time. Last pro last episode's FO is only draped in the back. I, you know, you can go back to episode 47 if you're nosy about the slip stravaganza, but I haven't finished anything this time. And that's, you know, I have phases, especially with my knit mojo recently where I just you know I'm glad if I do move on with the makes I have but I don't rush to finish because I yeah I, I just don't <laughs> and um so I I know that this potentially might not be finished at the end of the Lino Muka knit along but I will carry on knitting on it I love the drape of linen with a mohair uh, yarn it's uh, linen mohair yarn is is um, the mix of those two yarns. It's really nice and I think it's going to be wearable for autumn and springtime. Well, I don't know. I, I, will, I will see. I will definitely love having a Remy Muta cardigan, which is a design by Julia, who is Fräulein Städtisch um, or Jekse on um, Ravelry. And she has the pattern on Pay Hip with a 20% off for us uh, Lino Muka knit along girls and I'm super excited that I got to give away her pattern and yarn and bag in the Lino Muka giveaway however Christina the winner never got in touch not yet if you watch this now and you see this uh, I might have also messaged you but please get in touch with your choice of color and um, 
and uh, so that I can send you the parcel because otherwise I'll just have to like revote or recalculate a winner and I I just really wanted to do it through the podcast so yeah just get in touch if you are called Christina and you watched the last podcast and you saw that you won it um I am so thankful for the support by Julia for the Remy Muta cardigan and the story of the Remy Muta cardigan and I am excited as her pattern is also very size inclusive and well written. I'm, I'm looking forward to knitting um, this and I will feedback about it as soon as it happens. I also swatched uh, a whole nother airy swatch but that will be a swatch story for the July episode I think because I've blobbed a lot but I also swatch a lot and I enjoy that it helps me with my knit dreams um, and it helps me um, get into a groove again with the knitting um, yeah so that is all my knitting I wanted to show some mending next. In the 2019 Lino Mocha knit along I made the Mount Pleasant tea and I made this crochet bag which is called uh, Minton Bag by Isa Katipalan and it was through the pom pom it's in this pom-pom, the tile or terracotta. It says tessellate, rotate, repeat on the front. I don't know, I, th I think it was like a t t tile inspired um, The, the issue was inspired by tiles, let's put it that way. And this is the Minton bag, so it's kind of like a rectangle vertical. And I made a rectangle horizontal because I wanted a different shape bag. I really love the tassels. And I've started mending it. As you can hear... Yeah, I will, I will talk about the second mend I still need to do on it. Basically, um, I put an inlet in of a matching um, linen fabric for this edge, um, which is crocheted in the natural, undyed linomuka. And I think it shows off as the backdrop to this is the brick color. Of Lino Mucha, it, it's really great because basically a net bag like a crochet net bag with these big holes it's not so practical <laughs> unless you only transport like a4 sheets of paper or newspapers um, you know you could end up you know losing stuff or my pens would kind of stick out at the bottom and kind of just hold on and it wasn't it wasn't a very practical um, thing also I I didn't use it as a beach bag much because there's no beach nearby so for me this makes it a really usable bag and um, I started the progress of process of sewing the inlet when I bought a new sewing machine last summer and I I don't know I had some kind of frustrations and then left it for me to find and pick up this summer I'm super excited I did that the other thing is that I made this strap according to the pattern and it was way too long already so I ended up um, kind of doubling up the, um, the strap and using what's left. Look I even sewed it down double to add this hook for my key so the key can kind of just dangle inside my bag and not fall to the bottom. I think that was that was already kind of a good way of using the strap that I made that was the wrong length because the bag would have basically been um, dragging behind me on the floor because obviously the the whole strap is constructed for this um, horizontal um, 
rectangle anyway logic but I didn't I didn't think I just carried on working according to pattern but also when I cast on it's kind of you can't see you can't see it but you just have to believe my story is that the cast on edge is so tight of, of the strap that it actually digs into my shoulder if I put more items into the bag more than a wallet um, maybe a piece of paper yeah as soon as I put my project bag in for example this one which is not so heavy yarn wise it's getting heavier obviously as it as it grows but it kind of pulls down on my shoulder and that one side of the strap actually digs in that's not perfect so i'm gonna make a wider strap i'm gonna make sure to cast on less stitches and i'm gonna make it shorter so the mend is basically to make a wider strap i'm thinking like this width so maybe three times as wide but a Oh, two thirds shorter so that I have a, like a wide um, carrier thing I think I'm gonna keep this for for my key because I kind of got used to it now and I think it's very practical um, uh, but I'm gonna get rid of the strap and replace it uh, that's why I, I got the pom pom out again to do that I'm very excited about this mend and I'll keep you posted on it I think I'm gonna do an Instagram post about it once I fixed it because I'm very proud of this bag I'm not sure if I would ever be able to crochet this again <laughs> oh, and it was a holiday project I crocheted it entirely um, throughout a summer holiday and then uh, seamed it together when I got back home and had some more time on the weekends and stuff so yeah i'm excited about this mending because i absolutely love this bag um and the inlet works perfectly because it kind of also enhances this tile um pattern and yeah i'm, I'm very very enthusiastic about this bag i think it goes really well with my skirt which um has pockets and this is like a button down uh a skirt from afrofeminist um berlin and vanessa's uh clothes are amazing she designs and has these made and they're gorgeous i'm super excited i got to buy myself a skirt and i'm looking forward to sharing her website with you once she sells online at the moment she sells in berlin and in the markets and i really like her makes and clothes and i really like her so i'm very excited to to own one of her beautiful garments socks so I definitely have a one sock um, issue at the moment I'm gonna try and complete the second ones these two will be quick completes here um, I'm about that far into the color work so it's a bit of a longer process but um, this is all I'm gonna share for the sock alarm that I've got like three single socks <laughs> that are very pretty and make me very happy but Sock alarm, 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 alarm. Make that second sock, Mimi. Especially before casting on a new pair, I shall, I shall make second socks. Um, so that's for that. And then the last part um, of the podcast this time will be acquisitions. Acquisitions as in um, things I'm working on that you can acquire from my Etsy shop first. Um, I have just made a new batch of these. This is actually mine so it's been used but um, 
I just wanted to show you how I wrap it and then how you can take it out from her paper. This is her. <laughs> this is basically a hand balm Venus and I harvested sea buckthorn at our summer cottage and made the sea buckthorn infused oil as well as a calendula infused oil also from my garden here in Berlin and I've just um, used the last batch of those oils so there's 10 more in my shop now if you're into these kind of self-celebratory self-healing items of femininity and uh, caring for your hands you can go and grab one of these there is like I said 10 left and um, then I will have to come up with a new recipe if I want to make some for summer but um, or from this summer's harvest before I wait for autumn because sea buckthorn is that's the, at the end or mid-september so it's going to be a while before I have that oil back and yeah, I just um, love that um, I get to send these Venuses out to women um, mainly across um, the world. So I'm very happy that I have another 10 of those in the shop. And the other thing I needed to show you is I've picked up my embroidery again. And look. What am I doing? I'm actually undoing the advent of this. Because this zine has uh, really taken its time. It's been on ice for a long time. I'm definitely going to finish it this summer because I'm working on zine number 10 as well. But I thought I'd tell you about how I've changed from it being the advent zine to a zine called How Long Is Now. How Long Is Now is about a lot of recognition of how time is happening. <laughs> um, definitely now isn't six months. It took me six months now to process that I want to change the title for the zine and how I want to print it. And I find it really difficult to sit down for that desktop office job when I'm actually tired and knackered from shopkeeping work because usually I would have done this kind of zine making at night but I prefer the analog you know the cutting and sticking and the photocopy part of it but with these kind of more digital zines that like the Adwin zine that I sent out as a daily page and I've got as kind of a digital content as well as like a real life analog item like I have these pages uh, I find the kind of digital work very, very really daunting but I, I shall commit because I do want to send it out but I'm thinking to send it out together with zine number 10 to save myself the money of the postage but because um, this is, goes out to the subscribers and everyone who would have ordered an advent zine will actually get this as a real life item. I'm really sorry for the delay because how long is now has, you know, it's six months for you now. Six months wait, oh god. <sighs> Please be assured it is coming. Maybe I should just send it out separate and carry on working on the new one as I please with the new one. The new one will have a very Berlin focused item because I thought that works well with the lockdown and I want to share some uh, dear to me places and magical spaces <laughs> with you from my hometown. So it's kind of like celebrating the kind of local to me items that might become a bit like a little opportunity for you to travel. And I hope, yeah, I hope to share that very soon. Definitely after the holiday um, is the time I'm going to start focusing on this. Hoping I regain this confident zine making self. <laughs> and 
Uh, that was the zine making. Oh, acquisitions real style, not just what you will be able to buy from my shop, is actually an unboxing that I have that I can share with you now. Oh God, now I even broke the box. I got myself a sock set by Wool and Twine and I absolutely love it. I really love these dots of red and um, dots of yellow and the pink and this contrast colour is gorgeous. Ah, it's gorgeous. And I got a little extra mini. This is from Eula of Wool and Twine, a fiber studio, and I'm super excited. I really love her art and her work, and yeah, she's just a very inspiring soul, and I'm excited to make socks from this, but like I said, my sock alarm is that first I shall finish all the second socks, and then I will allow myself casting on with these um, plant dyed, um, beauties and yeah I'm very excited the other item I wanted to show is actually something that now lives in my in my kind of purse in my bag it's not an acquisition it was actually a, a present from my friend Jacqueline who is uh, Jacqueline Wilson on Instagram and she was part of the stash event crew last year and when I cycle I really need these kind of kerchiefs because I tend to get like a cold neck um, really quickly and a stiff neck so I love this I wear it when I cycle and it is kind of like a summery yarn or a summery um, neck kerchief and she made it for me and sent me this whole box of beautiful treats from Japan and it was like traveling to Tokyo in a box and it was so beautifully delivered to me and I'm so happy about our swap Jacqueline and I'm so happy about my little neckerchief um, that I wanted to show it here and, and, and really say thank you. I say thank you to all of you because reaching out and these connections and the things I've found through something silly like sitting down and recording on my sofa regularly has yeah it's, it's great I found um, a lot of moments to root and connections to grow from both for myself but also for a community that matters and it matters to me that you're all here and watching me and you know that I have subscribers and I have people supporting me on Patreon and that I have people reaching out to me and us having these swaps and ideas and this inspiration um, kind of bouncing makes me very happy and you know who you are you um, sitting there wherever you are <laughs> that it kind of matters to me that you're here with me um, today and often and continuously um, that is also why this time for the Knit Oracle, I actually asked you if you had a question um, and I had some um, outreach for that and I'm super happy to ask my new set of cards. I got the um, Tower of Pagan Cats, it's kind of a new acquisition and I'm going to ask all the cards two questions that I feel are also connected in a way um, about obstacles. Um, I was asked um, by one friend how to overcome an obstacle and I was asked by another friend and um, the question about if there's anything else 
apart from acceptance of how to deal with an illness, both point for me to some kind of gateway. So for me, they're both a question about how to 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 reach a new level or to how to come through. Yeah, I think the the image of an obstacle is quite um, good. Um, so I'm going to ask the tarot cards these two questions in one go. I think I'm going to use four images to answer them. And I welcome you to stay, but I also let you go if tarot isn't for you. Um, you'll see my knit reportage, which is a time lapse of a bit of balcony gardening and some images through my balcony plants, um, a bit of city green. And then you will um, be able to read the cards with me. And I thank you for joining me today and wish you a really beautiful end of your night, end of your day, weekend, week ahead, just a happy time and see you uh, in July. <laughs> bye bye!